everybody I hope you guys are healthy and safe so this is the sharp Akos r6 so sharp just in case you don't know, it's a Japanese electronic company, probably best known for making televisions and computer monitors. But they've been making smartphones for several years too. However, most of you may not know this because first of all, Sharp's phones are non-existent, virtually non-existent outside of Japan. And even in its native Japan, it is a distant, distant third place behind. The iPhone just dominates the Japanese market. And then you add in the fact that Sharp's uh, PR marketing team don't really seem to care about coverage outside of Japan. Like they don't really reach out to English media. That explains why English tech sites or English YouTubers have mostly not covered Sharp phones. But this phone, the Sharp Aquos R6 is worth covering because there are three things with this phone that really stand out in the industry right now. Now this phone is not on sale in Hong Kong officially and I definitely did not get this from Sharp. I was able to get my hand on this phone thanks to Simon or Trinity Electronics. Okay, so what are the three things that make the Sharp Arcos R6 so special? So first of all, is this camera. This is a 20 megapixel camera with a one inch image sensor, one inch. This is the largest image sensor ever seen in a smartphone beating the previous champion, the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra, whose image sensor size is 1 over 1.12 inch. The second part is, if you look closer at this camera module, it actually says Leica on top. That's because this camera was built in collaboration between Sharp and Leica. So this is kind of noteworthy because if you think of Leica and a smartphone for the past several years, you think of Huawei. So apparently Leica and Huawei's partnership have ended and now Leica has moved on to team up with Sharp. So the third thing that makes the Sharp Arcos R6 stand out is the screen. This is a 6.7 inch IGZO OLED panel with a resolution of 2730 by 1260. And what can I say? The screen looks really sharp. Okay, sorry, that's a bad joke. But anyway, what makes the screen stand out is the refresh rate jumps up to 240 hertz, 240. And it doesn't stay at 240 hertz um, the whole time, thankfully. It can actually intelligently cycle between one, as low as one, and as high as 240 hertz. That's just freaking crazy. Now, to be honest, if I look at the screen, can I really tell the difference between a 240 hertz panel and a 120 hertz panel? Not really. I'm cycling through the homepage right now, and animations look equally smooth to my eyes. However, there may be some apps out there that will benefit from having a refresh rate higher than 120. For example, some games out there can take advantage of a 144 hertz screen. And who knows, maybe there will be some apps down the line that can make use of the 240 hertz. Right now, it seems like a flex more than anything, but this is a good looking panel. All right, now let's go over the rest of the hardware. So overall, this phone is very premium feeling in the hand, but it is just yet another typical glass sandwich. So you have a curved glass screen, curved glass back, aluminum chassis, very familiar in-hand feeling. In fact, this phone looks very similar to my eyes as the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. It's not just the fact that both of these phones have a black and white two-tone colorway, but also the camera modules are quite big and bulky. They stick out relatively the same way. And even the chassis is the same color. So both of these phones look similar and they feel very similar in the hand, which is not a bad thing, man, because the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra is a damn premium feeling smartphone. Okay, let's get back to the chassis though, because Sharp does do something slightly different. So on the right side of the chassis, you have a volume rocker right here, a power button down here, and then in the middle is another button. This is a button that to launch Google Assistant or any other app, but by default it launches Google Assistant. And also down below you have a headphone jack. So this is good news for a lot of you out there. And the headphone jack is paired with a above average stereo speakers. So inside the phone is a Snapdragon 888 with 12 gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of internal storage. But anyway, we'll talk about the rest of the phone later. Let's talk about the main event, the thing that everybody wants to know about. This one inch camera sensor. So how does it perform? So the fact that the image sensor is so large, that means two things. First, you can pull in a lot of light. That means you don't need to turn on night mode when you're taking low light photos because the image sensor pulls in so much light. The second benefit to having a larger image sensor is you have a shallower depth of field. That means when you're taking photos or even videos, your subject will 
be separated from the background a little bit. The background will be a little bit blurred out, have that depth of field effect, aka bokeh. And the bokeh is quite natural. So in some of these samples, you'll see that if I'm taking a picture with the Sharp Articles R6 against the iPhone 12 Pro, you see how the Sharp Articles R6 image just has more natural bokeh, that extra depth of field that makes the shot looks a little bit more professional. However, Sharp's uh, post image processing is just not on the level of the iPhone. So a lot of times, if I'm just taking pictures of the street, you'll see that Sharp's blowing out the lights right here, whereas the iPhone actually produced a better balanced shot. Now I also took some more photos pitting the Sharp Echoes R6 against the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. And all three of these phones give you a more natural bokeh that the iPhone cannot because all three of these phones technically have large image sensors. And once again, I just think if you look at the color science, Xiaomi and Samsung's image just looks better across the board. And there's also a really bad shutter delay with the camera of the Sharp Echoes R6 right now in that when you press the shutter button, there's literally like a one second delay and that's resulted in a lot of photos that I thought I took the photo and then later when I look at it, it's quite blurry. So I say so far after early testing, I'm a little bit disappointed with this camera. As impressive as camera hardware is, in smartphone photography, software is probably equally as important. It's probably 50-50. You need good camera hardware and also good camera software. Okay, it is like 2.17 a.m. right now and I am editing this video that you're watching. I'm still editing right now. And I just wanted to add this part in because I realized I might have been a little bit too harsh on the Sharp Articles R6. Because to be fair, this phone is only two days old. It came out two days ago. So maybe a software update will come very soon that will improve camera performance. And even right now, even though color science and dynamic range lags behind the iPhone 12 Pro and the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, I do think the natural bokeh that comes out of this camera in still photos and videos do look very aesthetically pleasing. So the hardware is impressive. Okay, let's take a look at software. So this phone runs Android 11 and out of the box, unfortunately, there's a lot of bloatware. There's like Amazon, there's like a Disney app, and there's also a lot of apps from Docomo, which is a Japanese carrier. Now, fortunately, you can uninstall, I would say half of the bloatware, but a lot of the other ones are just stuck here. You can't get rid of them. And also, if you look at right here, there's a button to launch the app tray. You cannot get rid of this button because if you have one app tray, you have to have this button. Swiping up doesn't bring up an app tray. Instead, it brings up this little uh, Japanese Docomo news feed. So that's unfortunate. Needing to press a button to bring up the app tray is quite outdated. Now, if you jump into settings, it is mostly a clean settings page, except when you jump in here, this is Akko's tricks. Now, this lets you adjust special features of the phone. Like, for example, you can adjust the color signs of your display and then you can adjust the refresh rate for each individual apps so that's pretty cool you can have like one app to run at 60 hertz at all times if you like and just a bunch of other features here now one funky thing is you can shake the phone to launch an app so i've set it so you can shake the phone to launch instagram and then it just launches instagram immediately so overall, I would say the software experience is serviceable. I wouldn't say this is a great Android skin, but it's not terrible either. Now, I haven't used the phone long enough to give my own gauge of battery life yet, but there's a 5,000 mAh battery in there. So as long as the refresh rate doesn't constantly jump above 120, I think you should be good to go. It um, should be able to last you like 9, 10 hours outside, I think. That's why I get from the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. So I want to clarify that this is by no means a review. I've only been using this phone for about four hours so far. So this is just an early impression, it's not a full review. Overall, the Sharp Echoes R6 is a really well-built phone. It's probably one of the most exciting phones to come out of Japan, like other than a Sony phone in a while. But um, while I'm impressed with the camera hardware, the natural bokeh does look very nice, particularly in video. The post image processing just falls behind any other big name brand you can think of like oneplus vivo oppo xiaomi apple samsung probably even lg if we're being honest so anyway that's about it for this video if you're interested in keeping up to date with more of these are uh, unique devices that are usually released in asia only please consider subscribing to my channel because i live in hong kong 
And Hong Kong is probably just the best city for smartphones because we have a big import scene and we're so close to China, all that. So a lot of phones that people in the US and Europe do not get, I get my hands on. So if you're interested in keeping up to those, subscribe to my channel. I always get things before a lot of other people. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.